Everyday Life with Guards Mares, Chapter 7, Part 2. It was a little after 5 o'clock in the afternoon. To Artemis's left, Royal Engineer Anonymous was sitting at his desk, with Chancellor of the Exchequer, Purse Strings, sitting in front of him. Since he'd arrived, they had just been reading numbers together. Anonymous would call out a numbered line. Okay, next line is 312. 1,347,268. And then purse strings would reply. Line 312, 1,347,268. Correct. The exchange has been going on for half an hour so far. The Chancellor's own bodyguard had been at her charge's side the whole time, dressed in light armor and serving more as a valet, handing him various books and scrolls with numbers on them. Since all the numbers had just been lined such and such, it was as clear as a black storm cloud to her. All she could make out was that it was some kind of accounting. It reminded her of the work the intelligence officers did with her scouting reports, but these numbers were on a whole different other level. Line 33, whatever it was, was over 10 billion. Now imagine having to count that many enemies in a field. She didn't think 10 billion changelings could even fit within her field of view, and 10 billion dragons could probably cover all of Equestria. Okay, last one. Line 313, 46. That was by far the smallest number the Royal Engineer had said since it had started. Line 313, 47. I think you have last year's number there, Anon. There was a single edition this year so far. There was a shuffling of papers as the Royal Engineer flipped over to another book. The Chancellor had been addressing him as Anon. So much for him possibly being offended at Anonymous appearing to be overly familiar. I wrote down that I got it from last year's census. Uh, okay, corrected. Line 313 is 47. And uh, that's that. With an exhausted whinny, Anonymous put down his quill and rubbed his eyes. Purse strings closed the book in front of him, and smirking, passed it back to his bodyguard. Uh, nothing quite like some book balancing to close out a week, huh? The Royal Engineer yawned and chuckled in reply. Well, it's... Not exactly my idea of a relaxing Friday afternoon, but still, man, that to be done. The elder states pony let out a roaring laugh. Now that's the spirit, my foal. But really, though, a young colt like you, you ought to get out and do something on a fine night like this. Why, I don't believe you've left the castle since you were appointed to this position. Anonymous rolled his head to one side. Okay, that's not true. I remember I visited you at your house, and I must have toured a hundred facilities around Equestria. Purse strings tutted, even as he helped his bodyguard pack up the rest of his papers and books. Oh, come now. You know I meant besides work. Go visit the waterfalls, browse the shops, go see a show! Turning, the Chancellor pointed a hoof at the Royal Engineer. Why, I'll tell you right now, Lady Strings and I saw the latest production at the Sardina Theatre last week, and we absolutely loved it! Another operatic comedy by that brilliant duo, Gallop and Stallion, called The Magician. Fantastic show! Spectacular, really. Leaning back into his chair, Anonymous looked a little skeptical. A musical? But won't I have trouble getting tickets on such short notice? Purse String shook his head dismissively. Oh, hardly. It's been playing for weeks and weeks. It's nearly at the end of the run. When we went, they were still neighing in the streets for last-minute purchasers when the doors were open for seating. The Royal Engineer placed his fingers together and looked over in your direction. Uh, well, what do you think, Specialist? Would you care to comment on the Right Honorable Chancellor and Under-Treasurer of Their Majesty's Exchequer's recommendation? Before Artemis could answer, Purse Strings glanced over at her and spoke first. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot that you joined that little club of very important ponies earlier this week. If you do go, you'll want to try and get a box seat. Anonymous's confusion was plain on his face. I will? Why's that? By the expression on the Chancellor's face, Purse String seemed hesitant to reply, so Artemis piped up. Sir, in theaters and at other such performances, it is customary for a VIP's escorts to stand guard in the hallway or, if the subject is in the general seating, against the wall of the nearest aisle. Anonymous raised his eyebrows and glanced over at the Chancellor, who nodded in agreement. However, unless attending in the company of numerous fellow VIPs with their own escorts, or if one is a foreign plenipotentiary, it is considered uncouth and overly pompous to have one's bodyguard's presence in the audience room. The Royal Engineer leaned forward in his chair and placed his elbows on the desk, his hands clasped together and pointing at Specialist Sparkshower. 
Okay, so I'm attending a show, and you have to either stand far away at the edge of the room, or preferably take up a post behind a curtain in the hallway, where you won't even be able to see the performance. Every pony in the room nodded back at him, Artemis included. Anonymous scoffed. I'm sorry, but that's just ridiculous. Even if I were genuinely threatened, it sounds like you might easily be too far away to intervene. He turned to the Chancellor and shrugged his shoulders, spreading his arms. Can't I just buy two tickets and have Special Spark Shower sit next to me? Purse String's eyes went wide, and he stammered. Uh, dear. His bodyguard noisily cleared her throat, and the Chancellor regained his composure. Well, I suppose you could, if the mayor doesn't object. Spark Shower was a little confused about the awkwardness that she just witnessed. After all, the Royal Engineer's suggestion actually sounded like a neat idea. Imagine. Guards sitting next to their VIPs, ready to leap into action at a moment's notice. Plus this way, she would actually get to enjoy the show as well. How considerate of the Royal Engineer. And how fortunate for her to have such a generous charge. Artemis realized that Purse Strings was looking her up and down with a critical eye. Of course, she can't be dressed like that. Theater seats aren't built to accommodate armor, after all. Artemis' spirits remained undampened. Oh, well, I do have a dress that I could put on instead, if the Royal Engineer was serious about the offer to see a musical performance, I mean. Anonymous looked pleased. See, Purse, you're making a treasury out of a change bag. Purse Strings opened his mouth like he wanted to say something, but seemed to reconsider, and just shook his head as he headed towards the door. The Royal Engineer likewise got to his feet and pulled his dinner jacket off of a coat rack in the corner, looking over at Artemis. Your break for supper is just about now, anyways, isn't it, Specialist? I'll order some food for myself and expect you back here, ready to go to the theater in, oh, say, in an hour and a half. He was serious. Hooray for clear skies and puffy clouds. Yes, sir! One and a half hours, absolutely, sir! She pulled open the door for the Chancellor, who turned around just before leaving and gave a short bow to the Royal Engineer, who also returned it with a smile on his face. Closing the door after his bodyguard followed, Artemis was giddy with glee. Oh, just wait until she wrote back to Barry about this. Seeing a big, fancy Canterlot musical production in her own seat, how about that? Anonymous tugged on the servant's bell pull by the dinner table, and a few moments later the butler arrived to take his order. Once he was done, the Royal Engineer picked up his newspaper and gave her a nod of dismissal. Artemis respectfully bowed and exited backwards out the door. As soon as the door was closed, she booked it upstairs with a huge smile on her face. Oh, just wait until Glamour Spear and Honor hear about this! Let's hope that no John Wilkes Booth kind of shit happens in that theater, although I highly doubt it. Now how about we get on to our stealthy donators. Top donators, Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, and Ponyman. Courier Cruci, Strix, Zar630, Delta Omega, RuneScythe9852, Dosbo, Rhiney Dragonwolf, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowland, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Cerberus, Gulash Eating Hazar, Ron and Wandering, Ender I63, Random Person Man Guy, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David E. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Tilka Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Raquel, Mr. ECU, and Leslie Prickett. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.